I would just, let's see, we started in the hospital, had a lactation consultant, tried the nipple shield before I even had problems. For some reason she wanted me to try it, which don't do that because if you are a fan of um, reading and you've read like books, you've probably come across some stuff by Dr. Jack Newman and he does not recommend nipple shields. And I can tell you for me, they didn't work anyway and they caused more pain than anything. It was more painful to use a shield than it was to not use a shield. So kind of defeated the purpose and I didn't end up, I haven't used one. Um, the next thing, yes, we've checked for thrush. I actually took, I went through a cycle of the medication for thrush. I tried the cream, never had it. So that never worked. Um, I had my milk cultured. Yes, I actually pumped, took it to a lab and had them culture it because we checked for bacterial infection. Didn't have that. My culture didn't even grow anything over the course of two or three days. Checked for mastitis. Don't have it. I took a round of nifedipine twice for vasospasm. Didn't have that. My baby, when she was 10 weeks old, I found, um, I was actually on Facebook and saw a picture of a lip tie. And I was like, hmm, that's weird. I've never checked her for that. Well, good thing I looked because she had a third degree lip tie. Ha took it to our old doctor in Wyoming where we used to live and had that cut. And she was like, this is the tightest one I've ever seen. And I'm thinking, oh, thank God, our breastfeeding problems are solved. They weren't. So here we go, 10 weeks in. Um, and then at, she was about 18 weeks, I believe, when I had a friend call me and she's like, well, my sister-in-law had problems with her son or daughter, I can't remember, with a posterior tongue tie, which I had never even heard of. All I'd heard of was the anterior tie, which is really obvious, you can see it. It's the, it's where the skin comes to the, um, farther up on the tongue and you can see it's really obvious. Well, she'd been checked for tongue tie, never had it, but I had never heard of posterior tie. So we, um, I called the lactation consultant that she recommended in, um, in Colorado and, um, Yep, sure enough, she had it, you know, for as far as she could tell. I sent her videos and pictures of latching, nursing, before and after photos of myself of when she would nurse. And she's like, yeah, I definitely think she has it. So we took her to our dentist and he lasered it. She was 20 weeks when we did that. And the next morning, I could not believe the relief that I had it. The pain was, there was still pain, but it was near, not nearly as bad as it had been. So then two weeks go by and I'm like, man, I'm starting to get sore again. You know, it's starting to hurt. I'm getting swollen. What the heck? You know, we just had this great solution. I thought my problems were over. So I called the dentist back and we had it redone at 22 weeks, had her tongue redone. And then I called my, the lactation consultant in Denver again. And I was like, well, it grew back. So we had it redone. And she's like, well, it's not possible for the tongue to reattach which I had never heard that. My dentist even told me that it can, so <laughs> I'm not really sure um, what the accurate truth is on that. But um, anyway, so we had that done. Yes, her latch is beautiful. She does have a tongue thrust, and when we get home from, we're on a trip right now out of town, but when we get home, we're gonna take her to an ENT and have her lick, uh, her tongue checked, because I, my lactation consultant that I have currently, um, she's the one that's really been just encouraging me. She hasn't, she, we've tried everything that she knows how to try and she's just been awesome for me, but um, we both think it's her tongue still. So if you have had any experience with five and a half month old posterior tongue tie or tongue thrust or just issues in that area, please let me know because we're just desperate for answers. Um, it's extremely painful still to nurse her and she's still little so she's nursing every two hours usually still and waking up in the night a couple times so I'm just tired of being in pain and if you have some answers just please send them my way <laughs> if you've gone through this and I'm just um, I just want to encourage anybody that's going through painful nursing to just stick with it because it's still better like it's still the best thing that you can do for your child. Yeah. I mean, 
they're so worth it. I mean, a little pain now is so worth them not having to go through the pain of obesity or health problems when they're older. I mean, really, I, I'm overweight now and I just think if I can prevent my daughter from going through this feeling as an adult, then I'm going to go through whatever it takes to prevent that. So, um, Ooh, little baby, little baby. I mean, she just, she's worth it. So my other recommendation, if you're going through painful nursing and you can't find a solution and you're having a hard time staying encouraged, what really helped me was making a list and keeping it with you of the reasons why you do this, you know, you, the reasons of it's better for her, it's better for me, it's better for the environment. I'm giving her life. I'm giving her food. My body creates this just for her. When she's sick, I make antibodies for her. Formula doesn't do that. When she doesn't feel good, I make her better. I soothe her. I comfort her. You know, I'm just, I'm an amazing source of nutrition and I'm her life. You know, I mean, literally, I've given her life for the nine months that she lived inside me and now for the five months that she's lived outside of me, I'm still her source of life and nutrition. And that to me is just amazing. I mean, you can't get that with anything else. And they're just small for a little while, you know, and you never get this time back. So just keep that list with you. And then when, and pictures of her, you know, or him, just keep them with you. And it just, on the hard times and the hard days when you have to take it minute by minute, it really helps to have that visual aid of a reminder and an encourager of why it's worth it, why it's worth the pain. And I don't know, that's just what helps me. So also keep a bottle of water with you because when I know in the early days when I was just going through this and go, like going crazy, it really helped to have the water with me just to, <laughs> I'd start chugging water when she'd latch on because it hurts so bad. But anyway, um, that's just my recommendations. Um, I will post an update when we take her to the ENT and find out what to do, what our next course of action is. Because um, our goal is two years, so I'd really like to not have to be in this pain for two years solid. That would, oh my gosh, I would be crazy by then. I'd probably be a nutcase by then. But um, anyways, if you have any questions or answers even for me, um, let me know in the comments. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.